everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Vicious RV down here with a brand new bullet, the 2220ML. And uh, I asked my wife what she thinks those letters stand for. She said, Mama Likey. And uh, <laughs> that's not true. My wife doesn't really care. Anyway, um, we've seen this floor plan a lot from a lot of different brands, but they're all bringing a little bit different kind of piece of the puzzle to the, uh, the forefront here. So what problems does this one solve for? Well, first of all, fantastic half ton tower right here it's you know less than 27 feet by a couple inches so it's something you know toting it around parking it in the driveway state national parks not a real big like super scary concern right there um they're using their hyperdeck composite flooring so there's not really wood structure in the floor which is very cool a lot of asdell using brands still tend to have some level of wood product in the floor it's kind of cool they do it the opposite way here um your underbelly's enclosed and heated with an extended season package but the ride and handling of this is significantly i think a versus last year. First of all, they've standardized instead of import tires, some Goodyear Endurance radials. One mile an hour short of going back in time with Doc Brown in the time machine at 87 mile an hour rated. But the other thing here is they have improved the suspension. Instead of the common, you know, very industry standard leaf spring suspension that will rattle trap, bounce your RV down the road. And if you were riding in this thing going down the road, your teeth would be chattering like a nutcracker. This thing now has a uh, torsion axle and suspension system. It's not a true independent suspension, but boy, it's awful darn close. And what this will really do is it, it will lean into a turn. Like imagine if you're riding a bicycle and you're going around a sharp corner, you lean into it. That's kind of what this suspension does. So when you're going around those crazy curly Q exits on the highway, the trailer's not trying to pull you off the road where you're gonna need some giant semi truck recovery kind of process going on. So the ride and handling, the fit and finish, uh, a, a bunch of little things are improved on here. We're carpetless, we're easy cleaning, true queen bed. And that's another thing. They gave us privacy in a floor plan that nearly no one else does. So if you follow the world of RVing, this um, this floor plan, really, if you look at it, this floor plan kind of began as a miniature motorhome. It was adopted into the towable RV world and made very popular and successful very quickly by Grand Design Imagine, the 22 MLE. And then from there, everybody and their brother has kind of spawned their own little version of it. One of the key points on this one, kind of similar to the, uh, the the Passport Sister that makes this floor plan at Keystone, it brings uh, privacy. It has a set of sliding pocket privacy doors that kind of meet and kiss and magnet latch in the middle to give you some privacy. And uh, the result there is uh, that, you know, you actually, especially if you have a guest, because you're, we're looking at a theater seat right now, we're looking at a dinette. One of the things you can do with this is you can option a trifold hide a bed because that is a full deep floor flush slide. Now, um, this is one of their first runs of it, and they flat said, yeah, we know that the, uh, the the carpetless slide flooring, that marine woven stuff right there, is not laying flat. They're aware of it. They're, they know they need to get that targeted, so let's go ahead and rip that Band-Aid off and get it out of the way. Somebody look, will look at that sometimes and say, look, the floor's buckling. It's not the floor. It's just a loose piece of uh, fabric basically flapping over the side. Nah, so um, just to give you an idea. Now, up top here, of course, centralized air, and even though the lights are on one switch, you can still come through and click each of those off kind of individually. And one of the cool things with this floor plan is it puts you straight across from a couple really nice things. From your sofa seating arrangement, you're straight across from the entertainment center and you have some campsite window coverage. Now, we're not really getting the full effect of that right now because they're, uh, they've are they got their promotional poster over the window in the entry door, but there is a window there. And even though it is a private bedroom, when these dual sliding doors open up, you can still basically see out that window. So it, it gives you the sense of a really big, large open RV without really needing a gigantic big, large RV. Did you notice that motion light kick off right by the door? That was nicely timed. Thank you there. A little bit of, uh, you know, caramel smiling upon me. Did I say caramel? <laughs> I must be hungry. Karma smiling upon me. Now, They've swapped over here to what Keystone likes to call their do more dinette. Basically, a floating elliptical based dining table instead of the table that brackets against the wall. There's things I like about it, there's things I don't. It's a little bit more of a knee knocker, but I do like that it's floating so that if I want to move that table, say, like over here in front of the sofa and enjoy a little bit of a Dinofa action across from the TV, that's definitely something I could do. Um, now, generally speaking, these will be ventless flooring. You will actually see one heat vent in the floor in the bedroom. Because there was no cabinetry leading up to the bedroom, there was no way that they could snake a heat duct through and hide it up in the bedroom. So they did have to put one heat vent in the floor. Thankfully, 
They're using a, a new flat top kind of um, uh, floor vent cover on that that we'll get to see in a minute so that you don't end up with a, uh, you know, like a sharp meat slicer right below your bare feet in the morning. That's always a nice way to wake up and start your day, isn't it? <laughs> These are all sealed edge pressed membrane countertops all the way through. Pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry, so it's um, screwed fasteners, not stapled fasteners. And these are now um, 12 volt smart TVs. That's another one of the 2024 updates and upgrades that they've uh, applied to this series over here. So, kind of facing the other direction, you know, from the kitchen, from the bathroom, this is what we're looking at here. And what's great is, yeah, you have bedroom privacy, but during the day, it all just still feels nice and open if you want it to. And those dual sliding doors that meet in the middle, that's kind of like classic Fleetwood camping stuff. It's a very effective way of giving a bedroom privacy without actually adding a lot of additional length um, to an RV, which I think is kind of cool. Now, because you've got the, uh, the dinette window, you've got some awesome breeze across kind of capacity right here. Uh, these are cable sides. We'll take another look at that from the outside uh, at one point or another. Now, up front here, again, there is that one single heat vent in this floor, but it, it's not the uh, the meat slicer variety, which is kind of nice. And that is a 60 by 80 True Queen. That's something Bullet adopted way before a lot of brands. Obviously, they weren't the first, but I like that they went that route. It makes it just far easier to slot in a residential queen of your choice, and it eliminates the question of, can I put a True Queen in it? It's just a matter of which bed would you like if... You know, you want to ever swap your bedding out. Now, these are kind of nice if you're a little bit more uh, claustrophobic. You can see how the side stands are a little bit more kind of wide open. And the yellow stickers are telling us those are inverter prepped outlets. If you want a wired inverter into the RV, any of those yellow sticker outlets can actually be live off battery power. But keep in mind, you're going to drain your battery a lot faster using it like that. Now, because you don't have a wall across from the bed, they didn't really have a place to put a bedroom TV mount. But if you think about it, most builders of this floor plan don't have any kind of bedroom TV mount. So that's just sort of an extra thing that they've done here. Now, let's start taking a look through like uh, all the storage starting right up here. You can see how, you know, there is full overhead cabinet, but it is going to be a, a gravity drop variety. And one side uh, stand is much longer. It's not really a full walk around bed over on the driver's side. It's more of a walk around bed on the, uh, the, the camp side of the RV. And there is of course, easy lift storage down there, uh, below the bed. Now your theater seats are interesting because they, all three arbors actually have some measure of storage. Uh, speaking of which, you also have storage under the dinette benches because they give you some access doors. Also down there, something I forgot to display. This is my fault. Apologies. Um, underneath the dinette, you also have pull-out storage totes to make accessing the storage under that dinette um, simpler and easier than it's been in years past. Now, back in the, the kitchen proper, one of the only kind of, um, you know, notes or hiccups or points of concern I might have is just that the kitchen itself doesn't have any sort of, like, wastebasket sort of intentional storage or capacity or anything like that. And the stovetop isn't fully mounted up to the face of the slide, which means it might be a little bit of a head bonker um, uh, up top with that slide fascia. But overall, it's it's not too bad. I think I can, uh, I, I could probably work with it even at my height. But just, I don't know, a little thing to point out. Like if you want to, here's the thing. I, I put these videos out now so you can say, boy, sight unseen, that's absolutely the RV I want to buy. My goal with these videos is to help you kind of narrow down your list to three or four so that when you come visit one of our stores, Think of our stores like a dressing room where you get to come try a couple on for size and then, uh, you know, figure out which ones kind of fit you best. So that's the kind of stuff I'm, I'm telling you. Make sure you try this kitchen on for size. Now, kind of speaking of that, something I haven't looked for, where are the kitchen power outlets? We, oh, good, good. I was afraid they didn't have any outlets over here in the corner. You've got a nice chunk of counter space over here uh, with a handy, another one of those inverter prepped outlets. Now, the left side of the stove obviously comes right next to the slide box. So unfortunately, you're going to be cleaning bacon grease off the thing because RV engineers seem to think the grease does not splatter laterally, which obviously we all know it most definitely do. Big farm sink back here in the corner with a couple, you know, viewing and breeze windows. I really like this larger overhead cabinet. Like the way they angled it out, it doesn't feel too bulky or boxy or in your face. You don't have to duck back from it when you're washing your dishes so you don't bang your head on it. But it just provides more cubic foot of storage space. And I talked about Keystone Hyperdeck flooring all the time. But like all I can really do is like hand puppets when I talk about it. This is basically what it looks like. 
Um, it, it's, it's very similar to like an Asdell laminated wall, but it's a different kind of composite material from a company I believe called Tecmoto. But that's, uh, that's what we're looking at right there. Now, uh, taking a look over here in the bathroom, one of the things that I notice, this bathroom looks and feels uh, surprisingly large for a floor plan like this. And I think it's the way that they did that countertop cutback in that big window right there. It provides some really good space. Now, um, down below here, you can see that when you close that bathroom door, that sliding pocket door, there's actually fairly fluffy, friendly space in here, far more than I necessarily uh, expected. And they went with like a double medicine cabinet vanity with just a couple little corner open shelves. I don't know exactly what you might, what would you put in those corner shelves? I, I don't know, I'm kind of curious. Um, it is a small little four inch fart fan above us, by the way, I'm just at a funny angle, I can't get that on camera. That is your tankless on-demand water heater right there above another set of inverter prepped outlets. And as we work our way around over here, you can see it's not a big giant step over it kind of uh, tub. But in RV plumbing, you know, uh, you have to kind of put a little bit of that plumbing uh, above the floor unless you're going to cut a giant chunk out of the floor, which is kind of a structural nightmare. So that does mean that you step up into the shower a little bit. So even though I'm a little over six foot and the RV is about six and a half foot tall floor to ceiling, it means that someone like me is going to have to have their head in the skylight of that shower. Now, that's, a, that's one of those things, like, if you want a little more headroom, look at the Cougar version of this, because they do a barreled ceiling. Um, the Coachman Spirit version of this is also extra tall inside, which is very cool. And one quality that basically all of them share is some awesome traveling access. Because even though this is a nice, big, deep, basically super slide, where it's kind of, uh, it's a classic what the industry calls sofa galley slide. You know, sofa and kitchen galley being more of a marine term that you don't hear as much in the RV industry. You can straight catwalk right through this thing. You can get to the bathroom. You can use the private front bedroom. You can use the dining. You can get to the sink. I personally give this thing A plus travel access. One of the very few, I think, uh, points of concern some folks might have is there are some people that get really weirded out and spooked when a bathroom door opens right into a, uh, a kitchen like this, where, you know, if the, uh, the, the bathroom door were just a couple feet over, not right next to the kitchen, people would say, well, man, I feel like I'm going to crap where I eat. And I can understand that that's not uh, everybody's favorite thing, but obviously with the popularity of this bottle, it's not stopping a lot of people from taking her out. And I think when you're in a little camper, you're always right on top of everything anyway, but that's just my two cents. All right, so weights and measures here. What kind of vehicle are we gonna need to tow this? I think a tow package half ton is gonna be a really good fit for the sucker. It's not too heavy, it's not too long. That's where this one comes in. It's the mama bear size. You know, it's not papa bear, it's not baby bear, it's not a little bitty single axle, it's not a big giant triple slide. It's a nice in-betweener kind of size. Up front, of course, the power tongue jack doing the heavy lifting for us and the giggy box. And uh, <laughs> I wonder how many people don't know that reference that I always do right there. Anyway, that's basically a battery disconnect on super steroids is what that is to prevent um, all parasitic load from eating away at your batteries. Now, it does have a full pass-through, but they have actually a, a basic water uh, kind of docking station on the other side that does occupy a little bit of that offside baggage door. So if we slide over on this side, we're gonna see a couple things, uh, give you a better look at the hardware. You've got a solar disconnect separate from your main house disconnect. That's what this guy is to make sure that your panels aren't accidentally cooking the charge controller if you don't have a battery on it. We're prepped for TPMS and they now have a 30 amp charge controller absolutely standard on these instead of a 15. That also goes along with a 220 watt panel, so, uh, uh, solar panel up on the roof instead of the previous 200 watt. So they've actually bulked up on not just their base solar package but every single optional solar package available on these has basically gotten like 10 percent stronger uh which is kind of cool now um even though you can plainly see it not everyone is you know is fluent in rving so i want to point out that that is a, uh, a a cable slide system i have a bad habit of forgetting that just because i live in this industry doesn't mean everybody else can recognize everything visually so if i ever skip over something leave me a comment i'm more than happy to circle back and fill that in uh, for you whenever. Now you got a 250 pound rated, uh, you know, roof access ladder on the back here to get you up there to, you know, clean off your solar panel, check all your seals, do all your upkeepy kind of stuff. 
Um, this RV also really benefits from a uh, single sewer outlet, and I really like its location back here in the rear corner of the RV. It, it makes the most sense, especially in relation to park hookups. Now you see the power stabilizers back there. Those are a standard thing. Bullet uh, has been doing power stabilizers for several, I think since like 2015, 2016, they've been absolutely standard on these. So just push button, ease and simplicity all the way through. You may notice too that your stovetop uh, does have a vent uh, that, that exhausts heat outside. So you're not just recycling that heat back into the RV. And this year, new for 24, they've actually standardized a, uh, a class two receiver hitch back here. This is truly an accessory only hitch. It has a uh, 150 pound um, vertical load limit on it so kind of plan accordingly now back over on the camp side of the RV I'm obviously jumping around uh, like the house of pain all over the place in different areas on this one the underbelly is enclosed and it is forced air heated but I am just keying into the fact that is a huge power awning and with no slides on the campsite man you've got some serious patio coverage space on this thing not to mention some uh respectable overall i think campsite window coverage straight across from your seating and one up in the bedroom now this is a one two wombo combo whammy package of good news right here they have bumped up to goodyear endurance radials which is fantastic i think that just brings a lot of towing safety and peace of mind to the equation but for safety ride and handling you notice how there's no longer a leaf spring system here um, it is now a torsion axle and suspension system if you're unfamiliar with that um, it's the same kind of thing that like Rockwood uses and actually what's funny is years ago Airstream adopted that same uh, kind of suspension package because of you know the, the 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 handling and the way it takes so much of the shock and jolt out of the towing equation um, it really helps prevent you think about it like every nut bolt fastener widget and whiz bang in the RV every time you hit a bump on the road it gets rattle trapped around that suspension package takes a lot of that stress out of the equation so thanks again for tuning in like I've said there's a a lot of different builders that make this thing i'll probably leave you at least a half dozen links in the video description to see some other brands that have made a layout like this but i would like to hear from you after you watch this check out one or two or six or seven of those and let me know which one you would go with and why and to help you make that decision i'll leave you a link in the video description of course to check for pricing and availability and we don't do hidden dealer fees we just do everything else so when you're ready we're ready take care stay safe have fun and happy camping, everyone.